Good morning or good afternoon to everyone. I'm Giorgio Riva, a PhD student in Systems and Control at Politecnico di Milano. And uh, together with Freddy Ruiz, Simone Formentin and Sergio Savaresi, I'm the author of the paper named Model Reference Design of Fixed Order Controllers for Break-by-Wire Actuators. In this work, uh, we focused on the electromechanical brake technology, which represents uh, the future state of the heart uh, in the braking scenario, carrying many advantages uh, with respect to the actual competing architectures, especially considering uh, the future mobility trends. Here, uh, we faced uh, one of the main challenges, uh, namely the tuning of the clamping force controller, which turns out to be not straightforward uh, due to the highly nonlinear behavior of these kind of systems, such as uh, due to the presence of nonlinear stiffnesses and the limitations uh, in the power supply. The contributions of the paper are the following ones. First of all, uh, we developed uh, a nonlinear model about the actuator used as simulator, and then uh, we proposed a control strategy made by an outer proportional force loop and an inner PI-based speed control loop, both scheduled with respect to the reference force. Finally, the tuning problem has been defined as a non-linear reference model matching, where a rate limiter has been inserted in order to cope with the limitation about the power supply. Overall, we formulate an optimization problem based on suitably selected closed-loop experiments, which has been efficiently solved using a particle swarm optimization algorithm. Jumping directly to the results, we have compared statistically the solutions to the optimization problem with and without the rate limiter in the reference model. We can see that modeling correctly the nonlinearity allows to considerably reduce the dispersion in the optimized parameter, while it can be huge when a linear unfeasible model is used in the optimization problem. Finally, looking to the control performance, uh, we can show that uh, modeling correctly the nonlinearity in the reference model allows to reach higher feasibility in the desired profile. And also, we can show that it allows to reduce uh, the energy consumption, avoiding uh, to saturate the power supply for a long time. So thank you for listening to this brief presentation and I hope uh, we can discuss about it uh, in the upcoming session. Hello everyone, I'm Hume Kim, a postdoc researcher working at UIUC. I will present our research robust to big lane keeping control with networked proactive adaptation. Since autonomous vehicles are safety critical systems, their controllers must cope with environmental changes reliably. However, if we consider the black ice challenge, a safety guarantee is not an easy problem. First of all, prediction of such sudden uncertainty is difficult, and furthermore, it is too late to reduce speed once hitting an icy pavement. Early this year, there was a severe accident caused by icy road condition where 133 cars were involved. Now let us consider more general cases when the vehicles are operating in dynamic environments it is then critical to cope with complex environment. Existing technologies are reactive. For example, model predictive controllers has been applied to vehicle control problems in recent years and has shown exceptional performances, but its prediction quality is determined by limited prior knowledge. Other types of controllers such as adaptive controllers and learning-based controllers suffer from the same issue. To assess future environmental information, we try to use the measurement of the preceding vehicles. In particular, we design a general and systematic framework to address this problem, where the vehicles in the network share their environmental measurement with the data center. The data center fuses this information with the weather forecast to estimate the environmental factors of each region. Then, given the prior information, the vehicle synthesizes a robust controller and nominal velocity in advance for the area of interest. Since the environmental factors vary according to time and space, we design a special temporal filter, which is an efficient recursive estimator for large area and is robust, to, robust with respect to modern uncertainties. Given the estimated environmental factors and the quantified uncertainty, we design L1 adaptive controller to 
rapidly recompense disturbance while guaranteeing transient and steady state performance. The velocity range is designed uh, simultaneously to guarantee stability. In the simulation, we show the performance of the recursive filter that estimate the cornering steepness on the spares sparse a big measurement assumption that is the data center does not have measurement for all the area. We compare the proactive adaptive controller architecture with the non-proactive L1 adaptive controller. The proactive controller demonstrate consistent performance for all severe condition. Lastly, based on the estimated cornering stiffness, we empirically show the maximum velocity changes. Thank you very much for attending. If you have any question, please email me. My email address is kunmin at illinois.edu. Hello, everyone. We are a research team from the University of Picardy Jules Verne. Be honored to present the following work to you today. Vehicle Lateral Dynamic Stabilization System Design with Saturated Actuators. In this work, we use a simplified model two degrees of freedom with nonlinear friction force represented in the form TS fuzzy. After replacing the force model, we obtain the TS fuzzy system, where the energy bounded disturbances are the driver's steering angle and the crosswind. It should be noted that to use the vehicle model, it is necessary to validate the force model and the lateral dynamics model. As seen, the proposed models show good estimation results compare with signals from the car sim simulation. Then, this model can be used for design purposes. Now, we introduce the TS fuzzy saturation system. With the static output feedback controller dependent on parameters, that can be reformulated under fuzzy controller representation. Including the design bounds on input control and performance. In the framework of stabilization based on Lyapunov functions, we have the regular forms. And constraint conditions. Here, we use the fuzzy Lyapunov function and generalized sector condition to design the saturation controller. The stabilization condition of the system is analyzed under the influence of perturbation and saturation corresponding to the following requirements. When the system is affected by disturbance or not, we have the necessary and sufficient conditions of saturation constraints to be guaranteed. Then the statements are satisfied. In fact, this is a trade-off between performance, gamma, the estimate of RAS, eta, and admissible initial condition, eta zero. To solve the parametric LMIs, we have the following relaxations. Using the second method for parameter-dependent stabilizing conditions that leads to theorem, we obtain the feedback gain. Now, we would like to introduce the comparison between norm-bounded small gain, SG, and generalized sector condition, GSC, which are solved by quadratic Lyapunov and parametric Lyapunov function, PLF, respectively. It shows that the stabilization conditions using the PLF and GSC are less conservative and have better performance. However, the GSC narrows the region of linear regulation at the optimal disturbance rejection value. So the destable method could be considered to improve results. More details can be found in the references. The designed controller is now implemented in the vehicle's stability system to undergo a strong crosswind stability test on slippery roads. An uncontrolled car, an unsaturated car, and designed cars are compared as shown in the results. The uncontrolled car loses steering and slides off the road. The unsaturated car is regulating with large control signals. The vehicles with controller design ensure stability and limit saturation. Thank you. Hello, Gad. This is a research about autonomous emergency braking control strategy from a research group in Tsinghua University in China for the 2021 American Control Conference. Let's have a brief view about the research. First, why are we focused on AEB control strategy? That is because with nowadays development of others, there is a tighter requirements for AEBS. According to the latest rating plan from Euro NCAP, responsible clearance scenario for AEB has become wider, including scenarios with turning traffic at intersections. However, the traditional triggering algorithms of AEB, including TTC time to clearance, only focus on scenarios where velocity vectors of eco car and obstacles are on the same line and thus fail to respond timely and effectively in these complex clearance scenarios. Thus, we carried out an SIS based AEB control strategy. Here, SIS means inevitable clearance state, 
uh, is a concept from robot motion planning area. As drawing in the picture, the definition of SAS is for state of ego vehicle that no matter what possible tra trajectory for it to follow, there will always come to a collision. So from this definition, we can see if we want to use AB system to keep the driving safely, the AB function should at least be triggered at the last time before the ego vehicle enters the SAS. But because the SAS is a binary state has for practical use, we defined another parameter named as MCAD to be the triggering threshold for AB. That is minimum collision avoidance distance, and it reflects the minimum distance to obstacles under the best possible input trajectory. Here, the best trajectory is a uh, emergency braking. Different threshold can be set according to MCAD to trigger different levels of braking force. To prove the effectiveness of the triggering method, we also carried out simulations under different clean scenarios at intersections. The results show that the triggering factors can adapt to complex clearance scenarios with train traffic at intersection, and also the method shows a good scalability to be used in other vehicle control systems such as navigation, trajectory planning, and also traffic follow control. That's all. Thank you. This presentation is going to be about cornering stiffness adaptive stochastic nonlinear model predictive control for vehicles. Model predictive control is a state of the art control technique that uses a dynamic model of a system to solve for an optimal trajectory and control inputs. The vehicle dynamics are largely determined by tire road interaction, and tire forces can vary depending on the surface and tire properties. Underestimating the force can lead to conservative behavior, overestimating it can lead to unstable behavior. Our approach is going to be to estimate the tire force at uncertainty online and solve a stochastic and MPC program. The estimator we use assumes the tire force is linear and is broken into a nominal and noise component. We use a particle filter based approach to estimate the mean and covariance of the noise and the lateral velocity and yaw rate of states. On a surface change from asphalt to snow, the output of the stiffness estimator and 95% confidence interval is shown on the right. An important feature of the estimator is that as the tires saturate, the stiffness is underestimated. The stochastic MPC program is solved with sequential quadratic programming. The vehicle model is a single track model with linear tire forces and the stiffnesses are updated from the estimator. We approximate the chance constraints using linearization and assume they are normally distributed. The figure on the right shows a test case of a chance constraint for lateral position, where Monte Carlo analysis shows it is approximated to within 1%. In the MPC program, we enforce constraints on the lateral position, wheel angle, inputs, and slip ratios. We also introduce adaptive constraints on the lateral acceleration and side slip that are a function of the road friction. We estimate the road friction from the stiffness, however more sophisticated algorithms could be used. The plot on the right now shows the adaptive constraints, which we'll see tighten during the snow portion of the maneuver. We perform a comparison on 100 random trials for lane changes switching from asphalt to snow to asphalt. We compare total closed loop cost and score. A higher score means the lateral constraints were violated more. We compared an adaptive only or non-stochastic controller, controller with stiffness parameters fixed to snow and asphalt, and an oracle controller that uses the exact nonlinear tire model used in simulation. In this first comparison, we note that the adaptive only controller has some constraint violations while the proposed has none. Additionally, the cost of the proposed controller is comparable to the oracle. Next, we increase the speed to 19 meters per second, and the constraint violations have increased for all the linear controllers. Most notably, the snow controller frequently violates the constraints due to tire saturation, and the maximum cost of the adaptive controller relative to the proposed has increased significantly. My name is Carl Berntorp, and I represent work on center gravity location estimation using particle filtering. The center of gravity location is a key variable for all of our prevention. And while rollover itself is a relatively uncommon accident, it is overrepresented in terms of severity. 
There are two types of rollover. Tripped rollover, which happens when the vehicle comes in contact with an obstacle, and untripped rollover, which is induced by extreme driving. The center of gravity location is critical for rollover, but unknown during runtime, so you need to estimate it. And common rollover prevention strategies are therefore based on worst case scenarios. However, if we do have central gravity estimation capabilities, we can design less conservative prevention strategies while having robustness in the controller. In this work, we have developed a real-time Bayesian estimator that outputs the distribution of the center gravity location, the spring stiffness, and the damping coefficient. The method exploits particle filtering, a tractable linear substructure in the estimation model, Bayesian optimization for initialization of parameters, and online adaptation of the number of particles in the filter to monitor the convergence. And the method provides semi-analytic computations, real-time center gravity estimation, confidence intervals, which can be used by a controller, and uh, the method also provides consistent estimates. Since the initial uncertainty of the parameters and the central gravity location is typically pretty large, we employ Bayesian optimization for offline narrow down the uncertainty. Um, of the parameters. And uh, this method iteratively updates parameter estimates uh, using Gaussian process regression, and it outputs an initial distribution of our parameters that we can use in the estimator. The estimator itself uh, is based on two important steps. First, we use a particle filter for estimating the parameters itself, and then based on each particle trajectory, we execute Kalman filters for each particle to come up with a final posterior distribution that we seek in this method. For evaluation purposes, we have executed a sign with dwell maneuver a thousand times for different noise realizations, and we compare three estimators. The proposed estimator, the estimator without Bayesian optimization for warm starting, and a method without particle adaptation. Here you see how the number of particles vary throughout the simulation for the proposed method to monitor the convergence. And here you have the results for 1,000 Monte Carlo runs, the damping coefficient and the center gravity height with the true values in red dashed. And you can see that the proposed method always has its estimates contained within the confidence bound. That's also the case for the method without variation optimization. However, the convergence is slower and the uncertainty becomes much larger. larger. And the method, uh, finally, without particle adaptation uh, has inconsistent estimates, which can be dangerous in control applications. Hello, my name is Devin Schaefer, and I'm a graduate student working under Dr. Ping and Chen in the Department of Mechanical Engineering at Tennessee Technological University. The objective of this project was to develop an accurate longitudinal dynamic model for an electric vehicle with the one pedal driving feature. The dynamic model is then validated with experimental data. Next, a distance controller is designed, and then it is tuned and validated through simulation and real world testing. The electric vehicle used was a 2019 Nissan Leaf SV. It has a 40 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, a motor rated for 110 kilowatts of power, and comes with a one pedal driving feature called e pedal. The overall setup also included a D Space Micro Auto Box and a Delphi ESR 2.5 long range radar. The Micro Auto Box was used for data collection and processing as well as controller implementation, and the long range radar was used for both range and relative velocity measurements, which are utilized as a feedback signal in the distance controller. The simulation is laid out as shown by the top picture. The pedal percent is the control input for the vehicle model. The e-pedal control outputs a desired motor torque. The motor outputs the actual motor torque, and the drivetrain contains the final drive gearing and outputs the longitudinal force. And the chassis simulates the road load equation of the vehicle in order to output the resulting vehicle velocity. The distance controller is designed as a two-stage PD controller with the desired spacing and time headway constant as the inputs. The first stage of the PD controller is designed to generate the desired relative velocity based on the desired spacing and the actual spacing that is measured from the long range radar. The second stage aims to control the acceleration pedal percent to achieve the desired relative velocity and uses the actual relative velocity measured from the long range radar as a feedback signal. In order to validate the model, the data was collected from experimental test runs and compared to simulation results. A test run consisting of a step input from 0% pedal to 40% pedal, and a step change from 40% pedal to 22% pedal at 13 seconds. The results show that the simulated model behaves similarly to the actual vehicle in regards to both vehicle speed and motor torque. The motor torque verified the one pedal driving feature and the motor dynamics, 
and the vehicle velocity verified, the model drivetrain, and the chassis. The distance controller was tested and tuned in simulation and then validated on the actual vehicle with a scenario where the Eagle vehicle starts from standstill 67 meters away from a stationary lead vehicle. The lead vehicle remains stationary as the Eagle vehicle drives towards it until it reaches the desired stopping distance, which was set to 15 meters. The results showed that both the simulated and the actual vehicle stopped in a similar manner at the desired distance. I would like to thank the Denso North America Foundation for supporting this research project. Thank you for your time. Hello everyone, my name is Yun Li Shao. I'm from the Oak Ridge National Lab. In this work, we are focusing on the energy optimization for connected and autonomous vehicles. As many of you may know, with connectivity and automation, we have the opportunity to effectively predict the future traffic conditions. Therefore, we can proactively control the speed of vehicles for energy savings. The question really is how to predict the traffic. In this work, we propose a machine learning enabled prediction framework. The objective is to predict short term traffic for the next tens of seconds. And we, for, as there can be a transition period, we want to handle mixed traffic scenarios. We propose a unified model predictive control framework that integrates the prediction and optimization as shown in this diagram. Essentially, the prediction is the input to the optimization and formulates, for example, the car following distance constraint. The prediction is based on a traffic flow model to handle mixed traffic scenarios. For conventional flow model, such as the payon Wittmann model, there are several limitations. First, it relies on the assumption of a fundamental diagram. Second, there are several nonlinear terms which are empirical, as shown in this equation. It is challenging to model these terms. Third, it only considers impacts from one adjacent upstream or downstream cell, which cannot reflect our real world behaviors. We proposed a hybrid flow model where the vehicle speed dynamics is modeled by a neural networks with eight inputs. Here we consider the impacts from two cells in front. To evaluate this prediction algorithm, we integrate it with a speed optimization for electric vehicles. We studied a scenario when approaching a single intersection. As we can see from the left figure, uh, with the hybrid flow model, we can improve the prediction accuracy by 50%. As a result, with a better um, prediction, the energy benefits are also improved by 20% as shown in the right figures. With this, we demonstrated the effectiveness of our prediction algorithms. More details are in our paper, and I'm looking forward to discuss you further in the interactive session. Thank you. Today, I would like to talk about our paper role-based safety critical control design using control barrier functions with application to autonomous land change. Firstly, I will talk about the motivation for this project. Land change maneuver is challenging for both human drivers and autonomous driving controllers. During this process, we must guarantee the safety of both Eagle vehicle and other vehicles, and the Eagle vehicle should change to its target land. And we want to model this problem as a safety critical control problem. In the safety critical control problem, the controller will achieve the control objective while keeping the system out of the unsafe set. The quadratic program-based optimization problem using control Lyapunov functions and control barrier functions can be used for this safety critical control problem. Because of the relatively low computational complexity, it also allows the controller work at a high update frequency, which could help the controller guarantee the vehicle's safety in a fast-changing traffic state. Therefore, we want to use this CRF-CBF-QP formulation to solve this problem. In this project, a kinematic basic model is used. Under small slip angle assumption, we could get a nonlinear fine control system. 
In the controller, the control layup no functions will be used to drive the Eagle vehicle track the desired speed and change to its target line. Meanwhile, for each surrounding vehicle, a group of control barrier functions will be formulated to guarantee the Eagle vehicle's safety. The whole launching maneuver is divided into several different states, and a finite state machine is used in the proposed controller. The outputs of the finite state machine would be the states of the controller, high-level planner's behavior command, the Eagle vehicle's position, and the current traffic state will be the input. Then, let's see the simulation results. In the following simulations, the red vehicle will indicate the Eagle vehicle. In the first simulation, the Eagle vehicle will overtake a slow leading vehicle. In the second simulation, the Eagle vehicle will drive back to its initial line after the overtaking maneuver. In the third simulation, the Eagle vehicle will drive back to its initial line to avoid a potential crash, and after the threat disappears, the Eagle vehicle will change to the target line. We also test our controller with randomly generated scenarios. In the fourth simulation, the Eagle vehicle will change to its target line in a randomly generated scenario. Finally, we would like to thank the support from the National Science Foundation and the help from colleagues from Hybrid Robotics Group. My name is Carl Berntorp and I will present the work on joint tire stiffness and vehicle inertial parameter estimation for improved predictive control. Tire friction is a key parameter for reliable vehicle control, especially for non-trivial maneuvering. Several previous studies have shown that having the correct tire parameters is more important than necessarily having a correct chassis model. And controlling the vehicle under the assumption of wrong tire parameters can lead to disastrous results. Real-time friction estimation is difficult for several reasons. First, the friction is only implicitly measured by various sensing modules. Second, the data is scarce in the nonlinear region, so in the full region of the tire friction curve. However, if you restrict yourself to only estimating the initial slope of the friction curve, that is this tire stiffness, this parameter can be more easily estimated online with production sensing. Most prior work on friction estimation consider other parameters, such as mass and inertia as fixed, although they are really dependent on each other and should be considered. So in this work, we develop a real-time variation estimator that outputs the distribution of the tire stiffness, the mass and inertia for use within a nonlinear model predictor control. The method exploits particle filtering, attractable linear substructure in the dynamics, marginalization concept, production sensors, and a block sparse QP solver to provide semi-analytic computations in the estimator, a real-time NMPC implementation, and improved parameter robustness. The method considers the stiffness as an external disturbance that we estimate, and we design a noise-adaptive particle filter estimating the involved quantities. And then we feed the state, the stiffness, the mass, and inertia to a nonlinear model predictor control, which tracks a trajectory that we design beforehand or by a motion planner. And we also have this tool chain for going from MATLAB implementation to embedded implementation in an efficient manner. In the evaluation, we use a maneuver consisting of nine double edge change maneuvers. And we use the cost of the MPC objective function and the score as performance metrics. We execute 100 Monte Carlo runs and compare the cost and the score for five different controllers. The proposed controller, a controller using fixed inertial parameters, an Oricon controller that knows everything, a controller using snow asphalt, uh, snow tire parameters, and a controller using asphalt tire parameters. You can see that the proposed method decreases both cost and score. For the lateral tracking error, we have the constraints in red dashed and the reference in green. And you have the two surface changes from asphalt to snow and snow to asphalt in gray dashed. And when comparing the method using the fixed uh, parameters that is stiffness and the proposed method, you can see that our method improves tracking performance for this particular realization. Hello, my name is Shima Sadat Musavi and I'm from ETH Zurich. In this work, we consider the mixed traffic flow system, which includes a number of heterogeneous human-driven vehicles or HTVs, along with only a single connected and automated vehicle or a CAV. This forms a platoon moving along a single lane ring road. In these decades, 
we have a transition phase from using only HTVs in traffic systems to CAVs. So we should study mixed traffic systems that include both HDVs and CAVs. More traditional control methods employ controllers at fixed locations like ramp meterings. However, their installation is not cost effective and flexible. By using CAVs as mobile actuators, the traffic system can be controlled in a more effective way. For example, a practical experiment showed that a platoon of only HDVs on a ring road has the potential to initiate a stop and go waves. But employing a single CAV can dissipate the undesired waves. In the optimal velocity model, the acceleration of any HDV in the platoon is a nonlinear function of its own velocity and the spacing and the relative velocity between uh, this vehicle and the vehicle ahead. We consider the dynamics of the whole network and linearize it around the equilibrium point. We also note that due to communication constraints, the CAV can receive the state information from only a limited number of HDVs. So we aim to design a dynamical output feedback controller for the mixed traffic system that minimizes the influence of the disturbance on the output performance. The disturbance appears due to lane chains or mares or the stochastic behavior of HDVs. In this direction, we first proved that the system is stabilizable and detectable. In the simulation, we considered a ring road with 20 vehicles where the CAV has access to the state information of five HDVs ahead and behind. In this experiment, we consider a case where at 20 seconds, the seventh vehicle is decelerated at minus five for five seconds. This perturbation does not vanish when there is no CAV in the platoon. However, when one CAV is added and controlled by the proposed strategy, the stop and go waves can be quickly dissipated. Thank you very much for your listening. Welcome to my presentation on analysis of a cascaded MPC structure for vehicle motion control. First, usually in motion control, top level reference is given as a trajectory. Hereby additional information gets lost after the first control stages because only set points are passed through. But derivatives, curvature and dynamics are important for subsequent controllers. Some solutions are model inversion or low-pass filtering. The main goal is the design of a method to pass top-level information through the whole control loop, but without model inversion or heuristics, and to maintain suitable dynamics of virtual control signals. And the approach is the exploit of structural MPC properties. The example are two cascaded MPCs. Here, on top level, the prediction is done with the reference trajectory. Reference trajectory, new input signals are calculated and passed to the next control stage as constant set points. Based on this constant set points, the prediction is established for the second control stage. And after the second control stage, the same procedure establishes new constant values for subsequent controllers. And hereby, the information from the top level, from the red line, gets lost as shown. What is the new approach? Now the predicted optimal solution is used together with an interpolation. This predicted optimal solution is implicitly calculated during the MPC approach, but usually it's discarded and only the first value is applied to the system. This input trajectory is used as input to the next control step. To this, an interpolation is necessary to apply us with arbitrary sampling times. Here, the green line and the new input signal in purple. Based on this new input trajectory, the prediction follows the dynamics quite nice, and new input, input values for subsequent controllers are established. And this procedure can be repeated until the very low level controls. The implementation has a reference correction, which is necessary to improve prediction quality and control performance. And the transfer tra trajectory transfer algorithm provides the interpolated input trajectories for subsequent controllers. So these two algorithms are applied to the system. 
small summary with the trajectory transfer algorithm continuously differentiable reference trajectories are provided dynamics and hard constraints are implicitly considered and reference trajectories instead of set points with their derivatives are established throughout the control chain sampling times of two adjoint controllers can be different and finally with appropriate mpc sampling times the reference correction leads to significant reduction of the control error and a vanishing steady state error control performance is improved if reference correction is applied to a controller afflicted with model uncertainties thank you for your attention for your attention Hello everybody, my name is Michael Laukenmann. I'm with the Institute for System Dynamics at the University of Stuttgart in Germany. And today I will give you some insights to our paper with the title Analysis and Control of Wet Friction Clutches for Automotive Applications. First, let's start with the structure of the clutch actuator. It mainly looks like this and um, comprises a volumetric pump, which is driven by a small electric motor, a hydraulic duct, that connects the pump with the clutch actuator itself and the clutch piston um, with the clutch discs where the torque over the clutch is transmitted in the vehicle. Now let's consider the model of the clutch actuator. It comprises one ODE for the pump motor current dynamics, one equation for the pump speed dynamics. It also includes the pressure dynamics as well as the equations for the piston movement. This leads to a switched and nonlinear dynamic model of the clutch. So where does the switching come from? It is mainly from the movement of the clutch. We distinguish um, between three different modes here. The modes are called theta. Theta equals one means that the clutch is fully disengaged and the pressure is too low to overcome the preload from the restoring spring, which you can see down here. Theta equals two means that the pressure is high enough to compensate the preload and the clutch has not yet reached the kiss point. The kiss point is the point where the clutch discs barely touch. And the third mode um, equals that the clutch is operated beyond the kiss point. In general, this switching behavior of the clutch mode theta can also be represented with a finite state machine as depicted here on the lower right corner. Now let's talk about the main topic of the paper, the analysis and the control of the clutch. The first step of the analysis is to check the controllability with the nonlinear controllability matrix P of X for all three modes. In the mode theta equals one, the clutch piston does not move since the pressure is too low. So the clutch movement is not controllable in this case. For the remaining modes, the full state is controllable. To investigate the observability of the clutch, the observability mapping Q of X is calculated and it is checked whether Q is a diffeomorphism or not. The same argumentation as with the controllability holes. Now let's take a closer look at the observer and the control design. We design an extended Kalman filter to estimate the state of the clutch and we use a two degrees of freedom control structure that contains a feed forward part, a feedback part, the observer and a reference trajectory generator. Thank you for your attention. If there are any questions, feel free to ask. Hello, my name is Peter Summers. Today I'll be presenting a short horizon learning based vehicle speed prediction done here at the Institute for System Dynamics in cooperation with Daimler AG. Um, the objective of this project is to predict a speed profile up to five seconds ahead of a given vehicle that is non autonomous. In other words, trying to assume what the driver is going to do given certain conditions so that this prof speed profile can be used for con optimal control methods such as MPC to optimize inputs such as torque distribution between a front and rear axle of an autonomous vehicle. The approach taken to do this uses two convolutional, two parallel convolutional neural networks, one taking temporal inputs from vehicle sensor data and the other using route information or spatial information, or spatial inputs um, and this uses data from here maps, such as traffic signals and stop signs. The information from the route is provided um, in a dilated fashion to reduce input size, such that um, information near to the vehicle, both slightly behind and in front of it, has a smaller um, discretization in distance as information further away. 
as you can see in this yellow box. Um, the, or the network structure was also tested not including route information, and all of this can be seen in the two plots at the bottom, where they are also compared against a constant vehicle speed ass uh, assumption and a constant acceleration assumption, both commonly used for very short horizon MPC um, approaches because prediction of the speed is such a difficult um, task. As you can see that the TSNN, so this temporal spatial neural network, performed very well except for the first portion or the below four second interval prediction horizon of the route for route A, which is mostly highway driving as you can see in the routes plot uh, in the upper right. So here, all of the prediction methods are essentially, essentially perform the same because the assumption that the speed stays the same or the acceleration stays constant to zero is very accurate and noise from the neural network will be, will bring a lot of error here. Um, so overall, um, the network predicts instead of a consistent time discrete um, output, it predicts just control points um, for a B spline in order to reduce the output of the network size and a very smooth speed profile that is also um, differentiable. So overall, the, the results turned out very well and showed a lot of promise, including the route information, and I hope you read the paper. Thank you for your time. Uh, in this short presentation, I'll present an overview of parametric iterative learning and how this can be used for adapting feed forward control. Uh, I'll illustrate this using the example of uh, adaptation for gear shift control in uh, automotive powertrains. So let me first motivate this using the application. Uh, so in the first figure, you see uh, a typical automotive powertrain, uh, wherein the automatic transmission performs gear shifts to meet the power produced by the engine and the demand uh, at the wheel. Uh, so there are many kinds of gear shifts that happen and one, uh, one representative gear shift is one to two power on upshift uh, and some variables during the, uh, these, uh, this gear shift is uh, shown in the second figure. And as part of calibration vehicle development, uh, you need to calibrate these uh, control parameters P1 through P4 uh, at a variety of uh, operating conditions uh, that is at different values of engine torque. So you typically use this lookup table. Uh, now, as uh, uh, time progresses and due to wear and use, uh, the desired lookup table is different than what you have stored. So you need adaptive control to correct this. Uh, uh, so we use this idea of parameterizing iterative learning control. So we write uh, system trajectories during uh, in lifted form uh, for a trial. And then in the end, we show uh, that the closed loop system where these delta quantities de uh, are defined as the difference of the control input value stored in the lookup table at the current time step and uh, the control input values that are desired um, and you want to converge to those. So, so this difference is defined by these delta quantities. And what you see in this last equation, this closed loop matrix CJ uh, uh, it determines the behavior of how this different difference evolves. And uh, in particular, if the singular value of this matrix is less than one, then uh, these, uh, these quantities, delta quantities, uh, converge to zero monotonically. So that's what we end up showing in the paper that uh, uh, for this case where this closed loop matrix is two by two, uh, the, the closed loop matrix has a singular value less than one. So we show that uh, things monotonically converge. So you have good learning transients, which is a requirement uh, for adaptive control. Now we validate this using gear shift control where uh, we use a lookup table with two parameter and it gets uh, updated within 20 gear shifts to the required, to the desired value uh, that are represented by the solid lines. As future work, we need to extend this to more general case. Thank you. Hello, my name is Yusuf Rahman, and today I will be talking about driver intent prediction with control barrier functions. Most intent prediction algorithms generally fall within two categories. 
The first is a physical model and filter-based method, and it includes reachability analysis, interacting multiple models, and many other techniques. The second classification is machine learning-based methods. And this includes things like deep neural networks, decision trees, and Gaussian mixture models, to name a few. In general, these two approaches are both computationally intensive and prone to false negatives. It's also unclear how to use contextual information if it's available. In this paper, we use control barrier functions for intent prediction. In the literature, barrier functions are used to enhance safety by provide, providing forward, forward invariance of an admissible set. The basic idea is to construct barriers based on the road geometry such that their non-adherence allows the system to infer the intent of a driver. The figure shows the barrier candidates for turn detection. If a vehicle is turning, at some, uh, turning left at some point, the barrier H2 will be violated, but H1 will not be. Conversely, if it is turning right, at some point, H1 will be violated, but not H2. These barriers can be used to design a system that can predict intent. To design the system, we optimize the barriers, geometry and dynamics based on a cost function with the goal of minimizing the detection time whilst preventing false positives. We used genetic algorithms to solve the optimization problem and find the optimal barrier geometry and dynamics. The figure shows a performance comparison with an interacting multiple model. The figure and plots show that first detection is quicker, detection gets quicker as the vehicle speed gets quicker, and that the computational time is two orders of magnitude lower. A similar method for lane change detection was also developed. In summary, barrier functions can provide quick intent prediction whilst largely avoiding false positives and negatives. They're computationally efficient compared to other common methods. However, they do require knowledge of road geometry. Future work will focus on the generalization of the optimization procedure to different intersection geometries and pedestrian intent detection using barrier functions. Thank you. Hi, my name is Vahid Azimi, and I'm a research fellow at Stanford University. This is an algorithm for fast charging, minimum degradation, optimal control of series connected battery modules with DC-DC bypass converters. By 2040, electric vehicles will account for 50% of all vehicle sales. EV customers desire fast charging, long range drive, and good acceleration. However, frequent fast charging increases battery degradation in EVs. In this study, battery modules with imbalanced series connected cells, each equipped with a DC-DC bypass converter, are studied. Each cell is modeled by nonlinear electrochemical, thermal, and aging dynamics. Aging is modeled through SEI layer growth. Heat transfer between the cells is also considered. The challenges that we've had are conflicting objectives that are fast charging and minimum degradation, cell imbalances, multi-time scale behavior of individual cells, and finally, high dimensional optimal control problem. To address all of the challenges, a surrogate model is developed to capture high dimensional slow dynamics. Two fast charging minimum degradation optimal controllers are synthesized. Different charging time and same charging time. Finally, direct collocation approach is used to transcribe controllers to nonlinear programming problem. A case study of battery module with two series connected cells with initial SOC imbalance is considered for simulation studies. Result showed that DC-DC converter provides more degrees of freedom to optimal controller for planning of the currents. Under SCT, battery module is charged faster. However, DCT provides more flexibility to battery module 
against cell imbalances. And finally, under DCT, magnitude of temperature and cell current is lower, resulting in lower degradation. The main message from this work is that optimal controllers with DCT strategy for imbalanced cells in battery modules with DC-DC converters provides more flexibility to EVs for fast charging and minimal degradation. I look forward to having the opportunity to discuss this paper further with you at the upcoming interactive session. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. Uh, my, my name is Hossein Raskoftar, and I'm presenting uh, our paper, a physics-based finite state abstraction for traffic congestion control. Uh, so we offer a human-driven uh, physics-based ap uh, approach for traffic congestion control by integrating physics, human intent, uh, as well as optimization uh, approaches. Uh, uh, so uh, we use uh, linear temporal logic to provide feasibility conditions as, uh, such as uh, uh, input a uh, feasibility condition, a state feasibility condition to traffic uh, to avoid uh, oversaturation as well as uh, cyclic movement phase at junctions. So we model uh, the, our uh, proposed uh, finite state as abstraction con uh, contains a single exit node and the remaining uh, real uh, road elements. So to control traffic congestion, we offer the integration of MPC and the seeding horizon optimization. MPC uh, controls traffic to the boundary of the network and the receding horizon optimization optimizes the traffic signal actions at junctions. So this is an example that we consists of 53 real roads and a single exit road elements and the traffic is controlled at the boundary as well as junction. Uh, and uh, you see the results uh, of uh, this uh, integrative uh, control that was successfully uh, controlled the uh, congestion uh, at, uh, at all roads, road elements uh, in the network of interconnection road, uh, interconnected road. Thank you very much. Hi, my name is Matthias Marley, and today I will present the paper Synergistic Control Barrier Functions with application to obstacle avoidance for non-holonomic vehicles. So control barrier functions ensure safety of controlled dynamical systems. And given an affine control system, the subzero set of some scalar function B Rn to R may be rendered invariant by satisfying this inequality. Time derivative of B less than or equal to negative alpha of B where alpha is a strictly increasing function and alpha of zero equals zero. So in particular, we wish to enforce dot B less than or equal to zero if B of X equals zero. And the question that is addressed in this paper is what if LG B of X equals zero for some X in RN? Uh, and this gives lack of control authority and the CBF candidate may not be able to ensure safety. So suppose we have a non-hybrid CBF with LGB of X equals zero for some X in RN. We may augment the system with the logic variable Q uh, and then assign a hybrid CBF BN RN times Q to R where the critical points are disjoint in the state space. So if LG B1 of XQ equals zero implies that there exists some other value P in Q such that LG B1 of XP not equals zero and B1 of XP is strictly less than B1 of XQ, then B1 is an SCBF. And given an SCBF, the subzero set of B1 is forward invariant for this hybrid system HB. And here the flow map FB consists of the flow dynamics subject to all admissible inputs that satisfy the safety constraint inequality. And the flow set C, jump set D, and the jump map H 
define the switching logic according to two main principles. B1 decreases at jumps, meaning that you move away from the boundary B1 equals zero. And flow is only allowed when LG B of XQ not equal zero, i.e. you always maintain control authority. And in the paper, I show how this may be applied for a vehicle required to maintain a non-zero forward speed. Thank you. Hello, everyone. My name is Praveen Jain. Here we are presenting our work on three-dimensional moving path following control for robotic vehicles with minimum positive forward speed. The scenario we consider here is as follows. We have an unmanned aerial vehicle and we have a target that is moving along a known trajectory and we have a desired path that is specified with respect to the target. Now the objective is to design a moving path following control law that enables this UAV to converge to this moving path and follow this path as the mission progresses. Further, we assume that the path and the target are specified in three dimensions. The main contribution of the work is that we propose a three-dimensional moving path following control law that is free from the singularities arising in the error kinematics of the system and is also specified in a coordinate free manner and this is achieved by specifying the attitude control problem in special orthogonal group the proposed solution is applicable for uavs with minimum positive forward speed requirement and we also show that the proposed mpf control law is input to state stable in presence of external disturbances such as wind gusts to solve the moving path following control problem we consider the uav model specified by this kinematic equation and without loss of generality, we consider the forward speed of UAV to be constant. So the moving path following is achieved by shaping the attitude of the UAV such that it converges to this moving path. And hence, the angular velocity references form the control input. Here, we are making an assumption that exists an autopilot controller that tracks these angular velocity reference signals generated by the moving path following control law that is specified in this paper. That brings us to the main result of the paper, where the moving path following control law specified by these two equations makes the overall system input to state stable, provided certain initial conditions are satisfied. Further, the region of attraction is given by this set. The efficacy of the proposed MPF control law is demonstrated through simulations, where the green line represents the target trajectory, and we specify a laminate curve as a desired path. It can be seen that using the proposed control law, the UAV is able to follow the desired moving path. It does so in the presence of wind gust disturbances of different magnitude. The target relative position plot further confirms the input to state stability of the proposed control law in the presence of external disturbances. Thank you for your interest in our work.